Welcome to Bronco Television. I'm Joe Cabas, and this is Fayetteville State University's SciTalk. Today with us we've got uh, Dr. Jonathan Breitzer. He's a chemist with the Department of Chemistry and Physics here at FSU. How are you doing today, Dr. Breitzer? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, a little cold out, but I'm yeah, fine. It's a little kind of miserable out there yeah, today. Yeah. That, that's kind of miserable, but uh, we're here in a nice warm studio. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what you do here at FSU. Well, mostly I teach I teach chemistry here. That's my that's that's why I spend most of my time doing. Um, the courses I teach are upper level inorganic chemistry. That's my specialty. Uh, inorganic chemistry is the chemistry of the elements. Um, so organic chemists, like some of my colleagues, they get carbon, and I get the other hundred or so elements. It's a fair trade. <laughs> and then I also uh, teach uh, lower level chemistry, general chemistry, and recently I've been teaching the nursing chemistry, the chemistry for, uh, for uh, students who are interested in, in a nursing program. So in addition to teaching, I do research in uh, the reactions of carbon disulfide to make larger carbon sulfides. I have a reason to believe that these would make good cathode materials in lithium ion batteries. Oh, okay, and so, so the real, the real they show some Use, promise. Yeah. They show okay. some promise. There's some bugs that worked out, but they said they show some promise. And I also do work with committees, faculty committees. I've worked at the faculty. I've served at the faculty center from time to time, and I um, I also do public outreach. Um, I was the planetarium director from 2012 until well, it's closed for renovation right now, as you well know. <laughs> and also I do. And since the planetarium was closed, we also do public outreach. Um, with uh, students, we bring students here on campus. I usually bring them here on campus. They come in right. groups larger than any classroom can fit, so I have them <laughs> break down into different groups. You know, that sounds twenty like here, fun. twenty here, twenty there. They rotate to different places, and every time I do it, I feel like it's just going to be a great big train wreck. But somehow it all works out it in all the works end. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun doing the public outreach. It is, and I, I do the chemistry show, but also I have to kind of scrape together other faculty who are willing to do their parts of the their 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 events uh, volunteers to shepherd the students and the teachers from place to place on campus whatever room is available for it so it sounds like it sounds like it's a lot of work but it sounds also it is rewarding yeah it is so it takes a lot of planning of sitting out and figuring it out getting communications out and uh, just getting the information out to people okay yeah. so so what got you going in chemistry you know I remember when I was five years old, I want to go way back, and I was doing a, um, I, I was at a kind of a summer program at the local JCC, and they were doing a, um, a science kind of thing where they talked about floating and sinking, and you know, all just basic physical science. And the teacher had a chart of the planets in the solar system. Yes, they included Pluto at the time. <laughs> and ah. And uh, after the class, I was uh, had some few questions, and the teacher let me take the chart home with me. So I posted it on my wall. It was just a hand-drawn thing of the planets. Yeah. And uh, since then, and then as soon as I was old enough, five, you had to be five to get in the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. Uh, my uncle, somebody, usually my uncle, would take me to planetarium uh, shows sometimes when I was supposed to be in school and oh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we would uh, we would have we would have fun at the planetarium I would, would see the show see the sky shows uh, see the explosions sometimes the explosions were part of the show and sometimes there was some idiot holding up taking a flash picture but you know gotcha. that, so uh, that, so that, that's how you got interested in astronomy that's how I got interested in okay. science oh, in science okay. in my age I wasn't well too I, I was you know at my age I wasn't too particular about the distinctions between different things of science. Science was science. And so I was always interested in, uh, astronomy was my first love, but I kind of always liked physical s physics. Uh, my dad used to talk, he shared recipes, talked about uh, um, physics with me and all kinds of things like that. And so wow. I always, I was like physical science. So um, you grew up with this. Yeah, I grew up with it. And then when I got, went to high school, I kind of, I met, I, I, I had some really good chemistry teachers. And so that's kind of steered me to chemistry. 
But even when I was in college, I was kind of torn between chemistry and physics, and I started to settle with chemistry. Cool. Yeah. So you've enjoyed, you've, you've had a, quite a run with it. Oh, yeah. yeah I enjoyed quite it. a yeah. run with it. Cool. So what do you, what do you see as the best part of, of teaching chemistry here at FSU? Um, yeah. You know, I, let's go back to 2002 when I first came here. And if you think I look young now, you imagine what I looked like in 2002. <laughs> People thought I was a student. I could sit there in a classroom and the students could just think I was one of them. And wonder, <laughs> they'll wonder when the professor's coming. Um, well, I was interviewing here and I was showing around campus and I was so just a candidate. And, and I encountered some students while I was on the interview. And one of the students asked me, oh, what are you interviewing for? I introduced myself. I'm interviewing for faculty position in chemistry. And the student immediately said, oh, I got some problems with the... And right there on the spot, I was, when I was being interviewed, with my interviews there, I was helping the student with chemistry. And, which is what I came here to do, which I like doing. I like teaching. I always did. And it was just a kind of a... What I like the most and the most is me is encountering the students. Uh, support, the, my colleagues are very supportive. Um, administration supports our department. Uh, so it's a, it's a good place to be. It's just a good place, overall good, good place, place to be. To be. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got its frustrations. Every place has its frustrations, but yeah. 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 Well, so other than teaching, so obviously you're teaching here, what other kind of careers might, might people have in chemistry? Well, uh, chemistry is um, one of the most, uh, is considered a central science and is the most tied industry. I mean, I have no idea how many jobs are out there, millions of jobs that are out there that are tied in some way to chemistry. There's a chemical industry, obviously. Right. Um, chemical companies, you know, Dow Chemical used to be better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> yep, I remember. Then they dropped the through chemistry part to the <laughs> protest of everybody, so I think it's now <laughs> the human element, which I kind of yeah. like. Um, there's another one whose, chemi whose, whose, whose slogan is the chemical company. They make no bones about it. <laughs> But uh, chemistry is, uh, so there's obviously industry, but other than quality control, environmental chemistry. Um, when, I, when my mom first found out that I was going to be a chemist, she said, oh, you're going to pollute the environment. <laughs> and yes, and I can do the opposite. There's also a thing as an environmental consultant who doesn't know anything about chemistry. Right. I mean, you have to know about the chemicals to do anything about the environment. You have to know which chemicals really are bad and which are benign. Um, so they, but also for some reason, a lot of chemists get into things like government. They get into really? leadership positions. Uh, I asked the attorney here at Fayetteville State, I don't think she was trying to butter me up when I asked her what kind of, uh, if you do want to become an attorney, what kind of major should you major in? Maybe history or something, maybe humanities. And she said, actually for a lawyer, maybe chemistry. Really? Because yeah. a lot of law, a lot of law is just technical details. Okay, so yeah. so chemistry, science, engineering, all of those could be. Well, a when you when you graduate with a degree in chemistry, even if you're not actually interested in going to chemistry as a career, um, I remember going to a graduation at Fayetteville State, and when the valedictorian, back when they had valedictorians, <laughs> um, came by and they said, "Oh, so and so graduated with a degree in chemistry." And all the parents just <gasps> gasped. It still has that reputation. Yeah. You graduate with a degree in chemistry, all this person must be smart. Yeah. I'm not saying that chemistry is hard. It, it kind of is, but it has that reputation, and you know, it's it's a uh, it's it's a good subject to major in if you want to show that we want to demonstrate that you have a good grasp of details, but without losing track of the big picture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now you mentioned earlier that you've been planetarium director for a number of years, and obviously your your first uh, science that you loved was astronomy. So, right. so how did how do we end up with a chem chemist running the planetarium? Well, they need to need to take the planetarium in a different direction, and I had a, I had actually been helping out with the planetarium from time to time even before I was the ah, actual director. So your childhood so. Uh, passion. Well, yeah, I kind of knew or learned early on kind of how to work the controls in the planetarium and how to, um, you know, just the basic stuff, and then from there giving shows. One of the challenges in a planetarium, being a planetarium director, is showmanship. Yes, you need mm -hmm. to know, you need to learn, you need to know your stuff, you know, know your constellations. You need to know the things that 
people commonly ask. You see, there's I noticed that there's a gap between what it is that a typical astronomer would be interested in and there's a gap between what the public would be interested in. Right. Astronomers are different kinds, specialties. They might be interested in the composition of Jupiter. They might be interested in compositions of nebulae or the cosmic yardstick or gamma ray, um, gamma ray bursts, astrophysics all these things that the general public really doesn't know much about. Right. So that, or it doesn't even know enough to ask the question about. So the questions the public ask are the questions that will drive any planet, any astronomer crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my sign is cancer. Can you show me cancer in the sky? <laughs> oh, I, my, I, I bought a, my late, my late uh, father has a, has a star named after them. Can you show me the star? Oh, my. Yes. I still get those questions. Yeah. I still get them. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's an that's yeah. interesting problem. And so I try to meet them in the middle. I show them the constellations of the zodiac. Um, because those are the ones that are most common for people. And they, they have some kind of, oh, oh I'm a Libra. They're, I see my constellation there. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of... They kind of, so I kind of meet them in the middle. It's not exactly all the things that astronomers are interested in. I think it's most astronomers. It's developing an emotional are, connection. It, yes, to the, cosmos. to the cosmos, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. What, what was and also the other thing is that with with uh, with uh, with uh, as far as the showmanship ang angle, is that there's no script. Too dark <laughs> to read the script anyway. <laughs> you're you're running on you're with with no net. Yeah, no net. Yeah, no script, no net. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they when when you when when you bring the lights down and all the stars come out. It's so impressive, right? So what I do is I do the same thing that they do at the Adler Planetarium when I was a kid. I, at the time, when I was at the Adler Planetarium, I had no idea I'd sometime run my own planetarium, but you know, <laughs> I, the last thing I believe. But, but I, that's what they say that they did. They, they would turn the lights down so it was dark, but they'd still have simulated city lights in there, you know, a little right. orange in there. So you'd well, see some of the brighter in Chicago, stars. Chicago, you're, you're, you got a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. So you'd see some of the brighter stars, and that's fine because because if you show them all at once, it's kind of confusing anyway. So these are brighter stars. And then wait for people's eyes to get used to the dark, and then say, okay, let's go out to the country now. So you're not showing, giving away the whole show at once. You're ah. giving a little bit, teasing a little bit, giving a little bit more. That's what I mean by the showmanship angle. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, what was the best time, what, what was the best part of your working at the planetarium? Well, I'm always excited. I was always excited when a, stu when, when, when a, stu a, a school came, and I was disappointed if they didn't show up, which sometimes happened, even though I should be happy. I mean, I got more work to get my time to get my other work done, but <laughs> it's just seeing the kids coming in there, seeing their excited looks. Just get that first, when they first come in, they see the dome, they, see the so they hear the soft music, they relax, it's a chance for them to relax. Um, they just the excitement, the questions they ask. Well, um, what, what kind of questions do you get from the kids? Usually about things blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of black holes. Oh, bla everybody loves black holes. Everybody loves black everybody holes. Loves yeah, black. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would happen if all the planets, some of the ones I remember, like, what would happen if all you took all the planets in the solar system and lumped them about one bigger planet? Okay. And I would say to them, I would just stop right there and say, that is a very good question. Because if you took all the planets of the solar system and lumped up in one bigger planet, it would only be a little bit bigger than Jupiter. Because Jupiter is most of the mass of the solar system anyway. Well, outside of the sun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, outside the sun, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah all the planets, yeah, wow. outside the sun, right. Wow. Um, and I point out that I, I, had a, I, have a sh I had a show kind of like um, a Prezi, you know, we can zoom yeah. in and out. I took advantage of that technology so you could see everything in their uh, correct relative sizes and they could see how huge the sun was compared to the rest of it. Right. And, you know, you took, the su you took the solar system, divided into 700 pieces, 699 of them are the sun and one is all the rest, you know. That so puts it in perspective. It puts it in perspective, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, the, the planetarium's closed due to our Lion Science renovation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I'm hearing that it's going to be pretty impressive when we get back on. You know so it. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, so I hear. 
So yeah, something like, like 10 what? projectors. Really? And okay. uh, a control room to run those projectors. The computer is so fast, it's going to need its own cooling system. It's probably. I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing so that. Yes, I'm sure that. when we see it, it'll have the highest resolution probably in the world as far as as in far the as world? as far as angle as far as size resolution. Simply wow. because well, I mean it's because we have a lot of pixels in a very small dome. Okay, so yeah. so that's the advantage of having that small. You have dome. a small dome, yeah. It's it, we have more resolution than a 30 foot dome normally would. Well, be. that is definitely yeah. something to look forward. Yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, definitely look forward definitely to. Definitely something. The chairs to look will forward. be uh, the chairs will be will be modernized. Those old ones are kind of falling apart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they uh, make sure that parts of it are, are accessible, uh, ADA accessible. Um, the the we'll be able to purchase uh, full dome shows, yeah. and yeah. yeah. So not only will you get dome. the stars, you'll get movies too. Get movies, right? Yeah, we'll get wow. show movies. Yeah. Well, that sounds like that should be fun. Yeah. Uh, something to look forward something to. Something to look forward to when it's done. When it's yeah, done, when but it's they done. have to do the rest of the building too. That is true. Yeah. That is correct. That's correct. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's a something to definitely look forward to, mm -hmm. and another thing to look forward to will be our next. Uh, version of SciTalk here at FSU on Bronco Television. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Thank you.